Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Uh, you can come visit my website, thebiodude.com. You can come here to the store and showroom Monday through Friday, uh, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And I got a really awesome build. Uh, I got another uh, awesome cage here uh, from Zach at uh, cages.com. You know that I do a lot of business with him. We have our own BioDude cage line with him. Uh, and I have a beautiful 60 by 36 by 36 PVC cage uh, that, I, that has completely glass doors here in the front. Uh, and when, when inside of it, I have a 50-50 mixture of my Terra Firma and my Terra Sahara. And I'm use a, using approximately uh, 12 bags uh, total, so six and six of the 36 quart. Um, inside the substrate here, I also have uh, the bio shot and uh, a little bit of uh, uh, some of the other jump started fungal and bacterial in here uh, to get us started. So, probably asking, well, what am I building for? Title says it all. I am giving Mr. Smithers his upgraded enclosure. So this isn't his final enclosure by any means because I hope to get a Mrs. Smithers and give them one of the largest enclosures here at the BioDude. Uh, but this is a really good temporary enclosure until Zach and I get that final product done. If you guys remember my Aki's monitor build, you know it will not disappoint. But in the meantime, I want to make sure Mr. Smithers is living his best life because I got to tell you, he's by, he's by far one of my favorite reptiles that I have here at the BioDude. So bread lie python are really special to me because when I lived up in Pennsylvania, uh, I, had, I had the original Smithers and a willow. Uh, I had a pair, but when I moved down here, I had to make the sacrifice to sell them. And that was really hard for me because I had them for eight or nine years. Uh, and when I came down here, I found Mr. Smithers at a reptile show and I, I bought him and I fell in love. Now, bread lie python, pythons, they are from the, North, uh, the Northern Territory in Australia, which is smack dab in the, almost smack dab in the middle. Their climate, it can be pretty variable. So they definitely have seasons. So I do cycle Smithers. Mr. Smithers gets a, uh, during the summertime, so right now here in Houston, he has a hot spot of around 100 degrees, uh, as well as a cool end of around 78. Uh, during, uh, during the nighttime, we get to about 80 uh, degrees. During the winter time, so this is about three to four months out of the year for us down here in Houston, uh, because the temperature down here is so temperate, like snakes just know. Um, you know, and with that, we keep him at a hot spot of about 85 and around uh, set, uh, 75 degrees with the humidity all year of, of between 40, uh, 45 and 55%. Uh, so bread lie are also really known for having their darker, darker col uh, colorations. So being carpet pythons, there is only one carpet python larger than, than the bread lie python. And that, those are the coastal carpets. So with carpet pythons, you have your Arian Jayas, you have your coastals, you have your jungles, you know, and then you have these big, beautiful bread lie pythons. Now these guys have adapted to live in, uh, you know, in ravines, cliff sides. Uh, you know, so it can be a pretty, a pretty uh, harsh environment for them, but they are pretty hardy. So I've said I've said a lot about them. I decide uh, I love this snake, man. He's awesome. I'm gonna put him in his holding container for a little bit. Okay. All right. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get building. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I want the water bowl. So I, this is not his final water bowl because your water bowl should be big enough for your snake to fit on the inside to soak. So we're going to be replacing this with something larger and more aesthetically pleasing in, a, in about a week or so. But I know I'm going to keep my water bowl here up front because I need to be able to access it and, you know, easily clean it and change it. Within our lighting in here, we are operating uh, UVB. We are running an Arcadia 6%. I have two uh, Arcadia 50 watt halogens in here protected by heat, um, heat uh, barrier so he cannot touch the bulb. That right there is giving a concentrated hot spot of around about 98 to 100 degrees consistently towards the left hand side, uh, about six to eight inches under the bulb. Now over here on the cool side, we are getting, you know, your, your, your 75. 
Humidity has been staying right around, will stay right around again 45 to 55% and it's going to vary. Uh, that's the biggest thing with Dreadlock Pythons, like you have to give them good airflow, just like most snakes. So you guys know I import my own cork. This bad boy came in and I saved it just for Mr. Smithers. So I also have some uh, smaller trees. So I have two hibiscus. Now what's nice about the hibiscus is that it can handle hotter temperatures, it can handle spotlight. That plant grows in my backyard here in Texas where it gets, you know, a moderate amount of sun. Uh, and now that tree is almost, it's, tall, it's taller than me. So we're going to need to prune and do some things as we go. So I also have a shuffleera bush, which I'm really excited to use. So my first placement is where am I going to put this hibiscus tree? So when you're planting trees, they need a lot of nutrients up front because they have extensive root systems. So obviously there's a lot of bio shot in here. I also put in some worm castings and some other things. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna first figure out, well, where do I want my first, hut, my first hibiscus tree? And I know my hibiscus tree can handle a little bit of heat. So when you're planting the trees, it's really important that you give them ample space for the roots. So to kind of help boost up the springtail populations as well as the uh, populations of uh, uh, the, the help the roots, I'm actually going to sprinkle in my soil cal plus. Uh, so this is a calcium carbonate supplement that uh, we just started selling and here at the bio dude and we also use it for all of our millipedes. We've been breeding millipedes. It's fun. So first thing I'm going to do so I'm going to open that up and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit here at the bottom. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to put the root base right here and I'm going to cover right like that. Awesome. You guys see, look, this is a big piece of uh, sycamore bark. I got, uh, got a couple pounds of it mixed in with all this substrate mix as well as leaf litter, uh, and of course the 50-50 Terra Sahara terra, uh, terra Firma. Then we have uh, another hibiscus right here. So at first I want to do the Shefalera because I have a real special location for that. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to dig deep. Uh, there's about eight inches of substrate in this entire enclosure. I'm going to get my Sewell Cal Plus and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit around the Shefalera. That came a little bit more came out of what I wanted. Don't want that much. Okay, here we go. Okay, tree number two. So as far as plant lighting, we're running some of my solar grows in there. So I have two 36 inch solar grows, a 6% Arcadia, uh, and the two heat bulbs. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty, pretty legit interior. Next is the other hibiscus. And I'm going to be honest, I want that right in the back. Take this hibiscus here, and I'm going to dig. Uh, all right. A little bit of calcium. And there we go. So the reason I chose these types of plants for the back is because A, they're going to get big, B, these hibiscus, this hibiscus is going to grow away from that heat bulb. But they got a really good plant bulb right here, uh, as well as the UVB up here, plant, plant. Uh, and it's really good because this should grow up the back, as well as right here, should grow up this way with the Chefalera just kind of taking up a good portion. So. Since I don't really use backgrounds in my enclosures, and I, I would not put one in here simply just because of the vents. Like, I want to make sure that Smithers has enough ventilation. Look at this piece. There you go. And then 
we got this beautiful basking perch right here. So can't put that in just yet. Yes, I can. Okay. Come. All right. There we go. So when you're doing stuff like this, you really got to make sure that it's sturdy. You got to make sure that it's not going to touch your bulbs as well as uh, that it can support the weight of your snake. So I'm going to, I'm actually having the, all the support lean into the back corner. As you can see why it's coming up like that. But the chef, the chef layer is really going to cover that up in like two weeks. Okay. Now this big, this big boy piece, I want to fit this in here so bad, so, so bad, but I might, I might have to wait until his next enclosure. I don't know. Okay. I don't like that at all. It's just too big. Boo! Like I wouldn't be able to really have any plants in there. It's just, it's the width of the surface area that we take up. That's okay. Because I got this big boy right here. Look at that. Dude, importing this stuff's a lot of fun, but let me tell you, in the past year, Shipping has gone up like 300%. It's almost $6,000 in shipping just for a container from another country right now. That's just for the shipping. God bless America. Okay. All right. Trying not to damage my plant here. I am not a fan of that either. So what I'm going to need to do is take, since I'm done dumping substrate. Okay. I know exactly what I want. I just have to get it. There we go. Because I know for a fact that he's going to be sitting right in there and the customers can see him. And they like little groves like this that have multiple openings because in their habitat, it's somewhat like what they... So he can lay right here and bask and that's going to be a really solid basking point. I also have this beautiful cork bark branch. That is, I already know, too wide. Texas. Okay, so. One. Number two. There's so much I, that could be done with this piece. Yep. Now the question is, will a water bowl that has a three inch diameter more than this? Yes, it will. 
OK. So I do like that a lot, actually. I think for a base, it is, it is busy. But at the same time, it's, there's a lot of places for him to go. There's places for him to perch with different zones. I dig it. So now there's some other plants that I'm going to get in here to make this pop even more. So this is a Sanservia snake plant. These uh, can thrive in dry. They can thrive in wetter. I mean, people say they can't, but I always get them to, to grow in those types of conditions. Put that right there. Then I got this beautiful, stunning, as Gordon Ramsay would say, Jacenia. And this bad boy is going to go right here. Okay. We got another awesome creeping vine right here that we're going to attempt. So this is also going to be on the cool side. Next, I have another type of snake plant right here. So you guys notice how all my plants are strong. So they can handle Mr. Smithers' weight so they're not going to get crushed and destroyed. Okay. Got some pothos. So this is just a, a, a neon pothos right here. So we're going to put you here. So I'm not bothering with any epiphytes, mainly just because uh, he's just going to knock them off. Because he is a super, super active snake. Uh, there's just, for me, there's just no point. Because I can try to get a Brahm rooted, and it's just not going to. And it might get a little bit too hot. OK. Okay, so the pothos is going to slowly take over on this end. We got a nice Jacenia. What Honestly, what I really like here is, is that big opening in the middle. Because again, I know that he's going to be in here just chilling and, be, and doing, doing snake things. So cool. Next, we're going to start introducing some of the cleanup crews. So in here, I have some dwarf purple isopods. Sorry, some dwarf white isopods. Got a whole bunch of them in here. I just pulled them out so you can see they're all curled up in here. Okay, so I'm putting them right there, and you can even see they're already they're they're a little upset. They're all curled up and ready to get out. And then I got a whole plethora of Prisinius. So I'm expecting the dwarf whites to go to the bottom, and these guys to cover as much wood ground as possible. And there they go. Then we have springtails. So, boy, do we got a lot of them. So, and guys, I also put a bunch in here as I was mixing up the dirt. So, So normally, I like to culture my springtails long term on uh, substrate, but this this culture I actually got from Tommy at TC Insects. You guys should look him up, tcinsects.com. Great guy, great company. Uh, but I'm um, just you know getting a little bit more introduced. There we go. All right. So now we got the uh, cleanup crew in. So essentially, what I'm expecting to happen is like in everything else, the Bio shot that we put in here that has your, you know, endo, ecto, my, mycorrhizal, your archaea bacteria. It's going to work symbiotically with your plants while your cleanup crew are going to help aerate your substrate as well as help the plants keep going. So it's uh, overall really going to be a beneficial system. I'm going to have to really pay attention to leaf litter. I'm going to have to pay attention to make sure that we have enough biomass available to us because the Prisinius is... They are relentless. So now I want to make sure that they do have enough. So this is some of my, uh, some of the southern palm leaves. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take some of these and I'm going to be just kind of putting them here on the top throughout the entire enclosure. Now this is going to be really important because this is going to provide, you know, food for these critters as well as all the uh, biodegradables that are mixed into the leaf litter. It's all about making sure that there is enough food and security for everything that you're trying to utilize in this enclosure. I know that there's going to be some earwigs that are going to show up as well as some other types of critters and that's, you know, that's what I'm counting on. So. Okay, so eventually this stuff is gonna lose its color as well. Brilliant, okay. Let me sit back. Yeah. Next, we got some moss. So, I'm not sure how this is gonna do. We're gonna try. So what I really like is this moss on this cork, I will get this to come back alive. So now what I'm thinking to myself is I know the water bowl is going to be here. He's likely going to be feeding right in there because it's, it's Mr. Smithers. So where can I put this that the heat isn't going to dry it out too much? While at the same time, I think right here. Here, and we got some really nice growth right here yeah so this might be a stretch we're gonna see how this goes doesn't mean doesn't mean we can't try right okay all right let me get that water bowl in there So I got one more thing I'm gonna show you guys that I'm really excited for. So next I have some seeds. So real soon Bollywood is gonna be coming out with a really unique line uh, that is specifically for gra for grassland grazers or if you want to grow different types of uh, edibles in your uh, bioactive terrarium. So first I have some fresh organic wheat. So again, we know that, you know, I put the palms in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of the recta seeds and I'm just gonna put some right here, right like this. Now this white stuff is diatomaceous earth. So yes, diatomaceous earth can uh, be harmful to your uh, cleanup crew. So you gotta be really careful where you put it in. I keep the seeds right now on diatomaceous earth to make sure we don't get any weevils or outside pests that could damage the integrity of the seeds. We've been in uh, the testing phases with these for almost a quarter now. I've been really happy with the results. Okay, then, now I'm expecting this to grow like a taller grass. It's gonna be uh, like a bunch of taller grass seeds, so we're gonna check in on that, we're gonna see. Next I have some red red clover, which is a very m fine micro type of green uh, that we're gonna put right here. Okay, right like that. And then I'm gonna mist it. And I'm gonna check in on this every day to see how it does. So I am gonna actually, then I'm gonna, there we go go all right all right all right cool i'm gonna give this cage a real solid misting nice cold mist in here so to go over what i did uh 50 50 terra firma terra sahara mix uh with triple a spag moss uh oak and magnolia leaf litter southern palm leaves and sycamore bark all mixed together uh, seeded with powder orange and powder blue isopods, tropical springtails, and as well as your substrate fungal and bacterial inoculants. We are operating with 250 watt 
halogen spot bulbs made by Arcadia with an Arcadia 6% and a BioDude Solar Grow light. So let's, let me step back and take a look here. I'm really happy with how this turned out, guys. I got, this looks great. So all that's left to do So, you guys know, so I, we, we always recommend to wait, okay? Like, let your tank cycle and acclimate. Uh, but I'm going to be honest with you guys, I just, I've been ready to do this. And I know Mr. Smithers has been ready too. Because uh, we did originally have him in a 36, 18, 36, and it just it wasn't, was not good enough, not even close. Um, so, Mr. Smithers, without further ado, here's your temporary but still pretty awesome temporary enclosure. There he goes. So I'll be doing a follow-up video, of course, to let us know how, how we're doing. So if you guys are interested, Smithers does eat. Uh, he eats uh, large rats. Uh, he also, once in a while, uh, we will give him some frozen quail because we sell frozen thawed quail here. Because uh, in the wild, they eat a lot of birds and a lot of other things like that. Uh, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really had a great time building this, and it was definitely needed. Um, I really appreciate everybody's support, man. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, look me up on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you know, visit my website. Come to my store. I appreciate everybody's support. Do the bides.